Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I look forward to the day when we all can be together again in the same place. That'll be fun. That'll be awesome. Uh, truth be told, I look forward to being able to share with you even this way. Honestly, I we don't need a building to be the church, right? We are bound by the Spirit, and worship is our gift to God. Yes, it's a beautiful thing to be able to worship and offer the gift of worship together, collectively, as a community. But your very life is an act of worship, isn't it? You choose daily what you want to worship. Because every day we do. We, we, by what we honor, by what we focus upon, by what we put our best time and energy into, by what we make central to our life that day, we end up worshiping. Wouldn't it be awesome if it was God every day? What our life could be like and look like? When we eventually get together again to physically worship in the same space, I hope we keep that focus of worship. Because it isn't about us. As much as I say that, it's hard for us to have that resonate. It's not even about our Sunday experience. It's all about God. Yes, our greeting and our coffee fellowship and our hugs and our smiling faces are all a beautiful part of that worship experience on Sunday mornings. But when, but when such activity puts others at risk for their health, that activity is no longer a worship of God, but a worship of self. Hmm. And I've heard it all. I really have. I love you guys, but you're all over the place when it comes to wearing or not wearing masks and how you view COVID-19. Um, I'm going to side with caring for the most vulnerable among us. And um, more than the desire to get back to the Sunday worship experience we're all familiar with and that we all love and we miss. I know I miss it. And I love you guys. I want to see you again. I want to give you a hug. We'll get there. We will. It's sad to think that um, some, some of us are waiting to worship. That some of us are waiting for church to get going again. Well, oh, folks, folks. You know, um, worship is an everyday thing, okay? Because God's with you every moment of your life. And church never stopped. It's all here in our heart and how we live and relate to each other. If, if you're waiting to worship or for church to start up, I'm sorry because that kind of means I have failed you as a pastor over the past 14 years. If you refuse to worship because, well, of the social distancing or having to wear a mask in church, I'm sorry, once again, I have failed you. Because this isn't about our convenience or our comfort. It never was, this whole following Jesus. Okay? Worship is about offering a gift of love to God. And that's our lives. And you're quite capable of expressing that love to each other. You know, choosing to let six feet between us or a piece of cloth over your face to keep you from loving each other. Oh my, that's a sad testament to our perseverance and our resiliency and our creativity and our passion to want to be together, you know, under any circumstance. Hmm. Our brothers and sisters in the faith who've worshipped under the threat of persecution or death must chuckle that a few feet or a piece of cloth could keep us from worshipping God as a community. We're called to model love for this community around us, not just those who meet within the walls. I mean, that's what Christ followers are to do. We're to be a model and how to live upon this earth and following the teachings of Jesus. And to gather wearing masks 
is choosing to care for the most vulnerable around us, which is exactly what Jesus did throughout his life. So yes, when we gather, whether it's this coming Sunday or some Sunday in the future, nothing's firmed up yet, um, you'll be asked to enter at this point and to leave wearing a mask the entire time and to um, honor social distancing. And um, if that upsets you, I'm sorry. You can blame me. You can be angry at me, okay? I'm not going to stop loving you. Because I do want to see you, even if it's behind a mask. Hmm. You know, there's a hymn I came across by um, Charles Wesley. And, uh, and I was unfamiliar with it. it. It's called Weary Souls That Wander Wide. And one line states this, one stanza in, the, in him says, Weary souls that wander wide from the celestial point of bliss. Which got me thinking, you know, of another hymn by Robert Robinson. It's the hymn that's playing in the background. I don't know whether you can hear it or not. It's called, um, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Oh my, in other churches I've been in, that song was sung a lot. And I loved it. Just listening to it now makes me happy. It does. So I want to, um, I'm not going to sing it, okay? But I'm going to um, just share the words with you during the song, okay? Just... Uh, just a few of the of the verses, okay? So it's going to start up here, and and we'll I'll share it with you. Um, I think it's like the third or fourth verse of the song. I don't know. You know I, I mean, I just sing it. You know, but I'm not going to sing it. But anyway, here, I'll turn it up just a little, and I'll share some of the words, which I think are really apropos for today. O oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Aren't those great words? Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Aren't those beautiful words? Hmm. They are, and um, I know my heart is prone to wander. Uh, perhaps yours is as well. You know, which is really interesting um, because talk about wandering. I, I, I can't wander around like I used to in ministry and go see people and visit people. You think if I was sitting spot on more than usual, which I am, I wouldn't be prone to wander. But I think I am more than ever. I'm staying busier than ever trying to connect you people and I'm disconnected from God. How unhealthy as a pastor is that? Get rid of me. I mean, that's how I feel sometimes. Hmm. I'm still wandering around. You see, I get all caught up in that my relationship with God is performance-based. And it isn't. You know, being the, the good little minister earning his due as your pastor. and um, Rather than modeling for you being a child of God who's nurturing his relationship with God. And walking along with you and helping you nurture your relationship with God. I'm just busy. That's unhealthy. So I am so thankful that God is not prone to wander like I am. Right? Thank you, Jesus. Whether it's a great hymn writer like Charles Wesley or Robinson or 
or writer of the Psalms like King David. They all invite us back to a central place of peace, of unspeakable goodness and unshakable love and life of heaven here on earth. They all call us back to that because we can experience it. We can live within it if we choose. Every hour, every minute. We can be drawn back to that place, to the living, breathing, present presence of God in our midst. We're invited to lean into that lifelong process, if you will, of retethering ourselves and our souls to God. Hmm. So our lives should be like that cry of, Come thou fount of every blessing, the one who is the giver of all of our blessings. You know, Psalm 16 offers an example of what that kind of life looks like. King David shares how he pulls himself back to an awareness of God's presence, okay? Back to that celestial point of bliss that Charles Wesley spoke about. He begins with the psalm with a prayer saying, Preserve me, O God. He is asking for utter and complete uh, dependence upon God. That's how he, how he starts, all, starts out Psalm 16. Then he moves to, um, from that prayer to, uh, to confession, basically saying, I say to you, Lord, you are my Lord, and I have no good apart from you. Even as he speaks this truth, he reminds himself of that reality. I am saying to the Lord, I have no good apart from you. You, you are where all goodness lies, O God. And so he acknowledges that. He confesses that. And then he says, I will praise the Lord. And we need to praise the Lord, right? Yeah. I've set the Lord before me all the time. I set the Lord before me at night. He counsels me, David says. David is singing his praises to God. He's fixing his gaze. He's centering his heart upon God. He's centering his body before the Lord. I've set the Lord always before me, tethering myself to the reality of my beautiful Savior. Finally, after offering prayer and confessing and acting upon that prayer by saying he's tethering himself to God, literally, uh, verse 9 he says, Therefore, my heart is glad because I've done this. My whole being rejoices, heart, body, and soul is filled with joy. My flesh dwells secure for you haven't abandoned me to the grave, O oh God. You've made known to me the path of life. In your presence there is a fullness of joy. Okay? At your right hand are your pleasures forevermore. My favorite line in all of this is, in your presence there's fullness of joy. Yeah. Nothing nourishes, nothing satisfies, nothing sustains us the way God's presence can. God's our central point of bliss. Okay? We know this, but we have to keep reminding ourselves of this. I think we know this deep down. So I encourage you to anchor yourself to Christ, to take Psalm 16 today and just sing it out. Find your own kind of um, rhythm to it and sing it out. Don't worry about how it sounds or whether it's in tune. Just sing it out because that's how Psalms were written. That's, we were, were supposed to engage Psalms through song. So let the lyrics of Psalm 16 wash over you this day. Even if you sound totally ridiculous, and I know I will when I try it, these words have the power to draw us back 
to God's goodness, to the very fount of every blessing in our heart and soul. Nothing can replace that. Nothing. No church building, no physical gathering of God's children is needed to proclaim that truth. So today, as you go about your daily routine, I invite you at some point to sing out Psalm 16. Just go for it. Be a little radical, okay? And as you do, may you be aware of God's presence, that deep, soul-filling, body-nourishing, mind-satisfying joy of Jesus. This is the time to remember that our belief that our beliefs and our relationship with Jesus is not confined to some religious space or time during the week. It's not confined to some church activity. But in the words of Charles Wesley's mom, Suzanne, help me, Lord, to remember that everywhere I am, I am in your presence. Live today in that awareness. You are in the presence of the living Lord, of the fount of every blessing that you have. God bless you. I do miss you guys. I so look forward to getting back with you. And we will gather together at the right time, in the right spirit. Till then, continue to worship and continue to be the church. Amen. Amen.